Okay, I realize this is the third video now in a row about Christy and Bobby in the umpteenth video I've made about these two paintings. But I feel this is a really good lesson in um, kind of admitting when you're wrong in a painting and trying to find out how to make it right. And I apologize, I'm still in my pajamas. It's afternoon time, but I was up until probably almost 4 o'clock this morning, 5 o'clock. Uh, painting and thinking and um, trying to sleep and unable to. So regardless, uh, I've been working on these two pretty pretty tirelessly, reasonably tirelessly for me, for uh, several days, retooling the backgrounds in them both, where I had reds and teals and blues, but a lot of yellow. And yellow doesn't convey the idea or the image of what I wanted, which is blood, blood in the water, uh, uh, symbolizing rebirth. And uh, Durga, who I'm a big fan of, the Indian god Durga, or the Hindi god Durga. But in redoing the backgrounds, I've been taking the paintings and turning them and going to the reference material and finding things I hadn't seen before. And this one has been particularly key to me. I was actually able to see her arm a little bit clearer for some reason when I had her on her side last night, when I had her tilted, not really on her side, but tilted like Bobby is at that, I was suddenly able to see her hand a little bit clearer, clearer. I turned her upside down and completely reworked her hand. I saw that her shawl was not quite high enough, not lifted on her shoulder enough. I also found some really interesting details in her hair. Oh, so much paint on me. Um, in her hair, but in doing the background, and so I retooled it and really made her pop. Um, really made it work. She feels more like the reference material now. But in redoing the reds, I found other colors. And then I also realized something that I was having a discussion with a friend the other day about the limbic system, the, the, uh, the uh, system in our brain that controls or, um, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm still kind of sleepy. It, 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 it controls our emotions and it controls our ability to um, recognize fear, what we should be afraid of, the fight or flight system, anxiety, and empathy, <coughs> which, is, which is huge to me in painting. Empathy is necessary in doing portraits, but so is in understanding the limbic system. And I just have a cursory, cursory, cursory uh, something or other, a very surface level understanding of, of the limbic system. But I, I love the ganglia, I love the thalamus, I love all of it, but I especially appreciate the amygdala. And the amygdala isn't just like one little blob in the middle of our brain that controls um, emotion and, and uh, emotional memory and memory learning or emotional learning and our ability to um, evolve. It also, it, it, it also is the center of empathy. And we were discussing, we were discussing how I'm able to find the boo-boos in, in my paintings, but also how I try and find the character of the people I'm painting, how I find their humanness, how I find their, their energy and their drive. And it's really through focusing on the amygdala that I'm able to do that, feeling the amygdala, the two little blobs. They're, they're, amygdala is Greek for almond, and they're two kind of almond shapes right in the middle of our brain. And although the limbic system all connects, I focus on the amygdala, and what I was telling my friend is I try and imagine holding the amygdala, or amygdalas, holding them in my hands, breathing life into them, and helping them to expand. And that ignites my entire limbic system, where I'm able to connect a little bit better from time to time on my reference material. And the times that I don't, 
when I focus on me being right about things, because I'm a genius in being able to simply see things with my eyes and not seeing them with um, everything else that makes me human, then I miss. And I have missed on Bobby and Christy uh, several, many umpteen thousand times. But yesterday I had Bobby like this on his side. I had him upside down and on his side and I saw real deficits. And I came out this morning in my jammies and I was like, I'm going to tackle this. And what I've done in turning him back on his side is lower his head, really connect to him, open up the amygdala, open up the limbic system, breathe him in, breathe the reference material in, and who I understand the man Bobby was, and feel him, have empathy, and connect with him. And so I am trying to connect with him, and in doing so, I really realized <laughs> I had him straight up through most of the layout. I had him straight up like this. Sorry, this is very clunky and awkward. Um, oh, hi, Wasp. I had his eyes tilted up like this. I had them more straight. I had his mouth more straight. I also had the top of his head up here and his glasses coming off the canvas. And that's not the pose. I had his head way out here. His jawline is out far too wide. His shoulder too low. This shoulder too low. And this, this side of his face, the right side of his face, not quite right. So everything was being thrown off. His mustache, his mouth line, uh, the little goatee, the shadowing for his nose on the left side. And it really was throwing everything off. But once again, I was going, I'm going to make up for this little deficit. I can, I can make it work. I can make it look right. But it doesn't feel right. In the heart and soul, it does not feel right. The energy doesn't feel right. The, in the discussion with my friend the other day, she said uh, that I'm in, in, the painting, in my paintings, um, there's an energy. It's not just a painting of a person. It is their energy. It is their character. It is who they are, who they are alive, that you can feel it. And it, I've heard it before. I've, I've, I've just heard it before. I'm not patting myself on the back again. It's just I've heard it before. So I wanted to focus on that just a little bit and how, how I'm kind of able to tap into it. But, and you can find clues in my paintings as to how I tap in, oh, my necklace isn't there, how I tap into it through the lines that I use and the motion. If you look in my paintings, and it really is not on purpose, and it's not like, I'm going to do this wonderful thing, because uh, I want everyone to find a little puzzle within my painting. My paintings, you will see the ganglia. You will see or um, bits of the ganglia, and I'll show you here, because I was doing it, actually, to show you in black and white, this place is a mess, i got to clean up. Um, let me see if I can find a black and white. Whoops. All right, this will be a little bit easier to see. Um, again, I, I, I have a surface level understanding of anything, and I don't talk doctor. So the ganglia is like this little bulb, is my understanding. It's like a tiny little bulb or another almond setting inside the brain. And off of it is tissue. And they're connected by little lines. And I love that shape, although I've turned it upwards here just for just because. You'll see it. You'll see the ganglia. You can, have, um, you can actually see your glasses. Here. I was gonna do a show and tell. But there there is a there is just a little sketch of the ganglia right there. There's the little bulby part, there's the tissue coming off. 
There's the amyg amygdala, my, one of my favorites. Actually, the hippocampus used to be my favorite. I don't know why, but I was in love with the hippocampus. But the, I, the shape of the ganglia, you will find in the black and white. You'll also find the hippocampus. You'll find the limbic system running throughout. Here is another illustration of the tissue coming off the ganglia. And by focusing on the limbic system once again, it opens me up to doing things that are new to me instead of painting a picture of a life, lighthouse, a picture of a, a sailboat. I've gone in a new direction. Wow, yay me. I've gone in a different direction. I'm painting a new direction. I'm using different materials. I have a style that is my own because I was able to let go of the preconceived notions. People like lighthouses. I will paint lighthouses. That's how I lived for a really long time. People like sailboats. I will paint sailboats. Uh, what we were talking about the other day was I moved and I stripped myself of everything I knew, my hometown, my f the friends that I had, um, things that were familiar, moved to a, a little city that was in pretty good disrepair and, I, and it was stripped down to the bones also. And Bugsy and I moved into a little apartment. I bought a huge canvas and just started to paint while opening up my limbic system, my limbic system, whatever it is, and um, letting energy flow, letting ideas flow. I had a head injury a few uh, number of years ago, 23 years ago, and before that I was very angry. I was scared of everything and I was very angry. And once I got cracked in the nut, once my like coconut, my little coconut got cracked open, I was, I lost the, the ability to be angry all the time, which I was. Now I have to now I not have to, but it takes a lot for me to get really angry. Once I'm there, I'm there. But it also knocked away some fear, and over time and counseling and therapy um, and, and experience, fear has also left me. Not all the time, but most of the time. Fear has left me. So I'm able to glom onto an idea and not be afraid of glomming onto that idea and glomming onto not being wrong and glom onto not worrying about what people think about what I do. I'm not fearful. And what they say to me isn't necessarily going to make me angry. It's going to make me more focused. Because I found that ability when I stripped myself of my hometown and everything I knew and just started opening my head. And I talk about keeping myself distracted, like with a podcast or a book or, you know, my favorite radio shows on WGVH. I keep, I keep the part of me that goes, uh-oh, uh-oh, totally and completely distracted by listening to that. And I keep my amygdala open and my entire limbic system open to letting other energies in, letting empathy roll in and take over so I can refocus on the, on the figure work or the portrait work that I'm doing, like poor little Bobby. Like poor little Bobby. I do do it all the way through the painting, but there is a point where it op my mind opens up even further. I paint in almost a meditative mode. Deep breath into the centers of my brain that control emotion and process and motor skills. Let it go. Let all of that go as best I can and open it up. I can tell I'm almost at the end of these two because when I opened myself up again last night and again this, and then this morning, I was able to see this clearly, which is the process. Like I will work and 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 meditate and open my mind and open my um, amygdala and open everything up as best I can and let let the centers, the energy, and the emotion, and the empathy, <clears throat> open it all up to my people, the people, the figures, whatever I'm painting, the um, 
abstracts. It's just a process. Just because I, I feel I'm doing that doesn't mean I'm going to get it right, right away. It's not going to be like, I'm a genius. <laughs> oh, my mind is open to the world. I can get everything right at this second, this moment, because I'm such a genius. It does take time. It's a process. Like being smacked in the head and learning how not to be angry and fearful. Fear of failure, fear, even though I have that, you know, just fear of everything, fear of judgment, fear of not painting lighthouses and not selling. Just like, it's, it's, it's a process. Letting what you think you know go and locking into other energies. You'll feel the energies, I am told, you'll feel the energies in every painting that I do whether it's figure work or portrait work, but especially in the, uh, the abstract work that I do. The abstract work I do is nothing but energies. And it's not like I sit down and I listen to, you know, scientists talk about string theory. I'm not sitting around going, hmm, hmm, genius. I'm actually probably listening to a true crime podcast to keep the this is how you should do things part of my brain shut off and listening to the podcast and opening up opening up the wonderful limbic system yesterday I was reminded how important it is this is, was it yesterday or two days ago I got a haircut and the woman was rubbing the base of my uh, skull and talking about the hippocampus and pulling just a tiny bit and it was like boom 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 So my suggestion here is go online, learn more about the limbic system than I can tell you. Take it in, breathe it in. Breathe it in. I can feel it now. They talk about it as being one of the chakras, actually. If you're looking at meditation and yoga, they're talking about a chakra, the third eye. And in my opinion, that's exactly what it is. It's these little bulbs and almonds in our brain that all connect to make us feel. Feel emotion, but to also feel and recognize others. So I would go online and learn a little bit more than me. This is just back talking from our cursier, cursory, cursory, there's the word, cursory surface level with my little illustration over there and my notes that I can't even read because I don't have my glasses on. But open yourself up. If you're stuck and stymied, on, you want to do more than do pet portraits, you want to go to the other level, go online, start learning around, learning about your own brain. Start learning about your own brain and how it works, how it processes. And then open your soul to new opportunities, even in painting. My suggestion, take everything that you think you know, put it to the side, get a very large canvas or a very large whatever. Let it flow. You will feel more genuine. Anyway, i got to work on him. I've got to... Um, really connect with the reference material in a new direction, sideways. But he's almost done. I can feel it. These are almost done. And I'm really excited about that. This actually only took a few days to connect Bobby with uh, Christy because I allowed myself to open up. The torn canvas gave me the opportunity. The original painting had, was torn and it gave me the opportunity to start again and really connect and it's super exciting to me. Anyway, that's enough of this. Don't forget, if you like this channel, please subscribe. Please hit subscribe and also go on Patreon. Um, if you like this channel, please, uh, uh, per, if you can, give monthly support to Studio 120 so I can get a new iPad, I can get new lighting, maybe make it a little bit prettier in here and slightly more professional, although not too professional because we 
love the boxes and chairs that I use as easels. And But go on Patreon.com, um, subscribe. I'd like to thank my new subscriber, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. Uh, I think she's a $10 a month subscriber. That's awesome. That's well, $10 closer we are to a new iPad. Anyway, thanks again, uh, or support, whatever I said. Gonna go drink more, more coffee, okay? Thanks. Ciao. Ciao.